Last week on Family. Dad, watch out. I can't see you, Kate. I can't see anything. It's a very difficult operation, Doug. And not guaranteed to work. Mike, what he's saying is the operation could cure me. It could also fail to cure me, and it could also kill me. Is that right? Well, I'm blind right now. But you understand that, don't you? I understand. I think it stinks. It really stinks. Well, if I keep on talking, I won't have to think. About the operation? I don't want to die. You think I have any idea of how I'd live without him? I don't. I don't have any idea at all. I need you. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to have the operation. I want to go home, Kate. I want to get out of here. I want to go home. Kate? Kate, help me. I don't know where I am. And in a moment, part two of Taking Chances. Let's have breakfast in the patio. You'll feel so much better if you get out of this room. Maybe you're right. Here's your robe. Ah. The more you move around the house, the easier it'll be for you. Tell that to the furniture. All right, you get it ready. Come back for me in a few minutes. I may not match, but I'll, I'll be dressed. Good. And for your information, I have now a big smile on my face. Can you find my slipper for me, please? It's right there. Never mind. Thank you. Listen, I better get going, okay? For school? No, it's Sunday. It's hard to keep track. Listen, buddy, why don't you sit down and talk to me for a few minutes? Well, I can't. Audrey's waiting for me. We've hardly talked at all since I came home. Well, maybe some other time, because I have to go now, OK? Good morning. Good morning. Is that your breakfast? It's plenty. I'm in a hurry. Where are you going? Audrey, she's waiting for me. Buddy, I want to ask you a favor. Your father's coming down to have breakfast in the garden. I think he'd like it if you sat with him. Uh-uh, I can't. Buddy! Well, he's not coming down anyway. He is. He was just getting up to get dressed when I came downstairs. Well, he's not now. He's sitting in his chair, just like yesterday and the day before. Did something happen? Yeah. He decided to stay blind. Mm. 
when he's finished, it's my turn. Oh, it's one of those days, huh? Oh, another perfect Sunday at the Lawrence's. Buddy came crashing down out of the house, mean as a snake. Oh, it's being impossible. She just can't handle it. She thinks Daddy let her down. Is he still upstairs? I tried to get him to come down, but he won't. When he first came home, he started off so well, and then zap. Truth is, Nancy, it scares the hell out of me. He'll be all right. Suppose he isn't. We sure can't live on what I earn. Well, what makes you think we're going to have to? Daddy's still head of the family. We know that, but he doesn't seem to. Well, give him a chance. And give yourself a chance, too. I mean, I think you made a big mistake going back to work for Bertrand Hammond. You should just quit, for real, this time. You feel a lot better about yourself. Nancy, we may need the money. I've got money. It's yours. Hang on to it. You may need it when you have to support the entire family. <sighs> okay, baby brother. <laughs> That's the way you want to see it. Hop in, I'll get you cereal. Kate? Your breakfast. I'm just not up to the garden this morning. The coffee's very hot. It's in the upper right-hand corner. It's toast on the left with marmalade on it and bacon on a plate to the right. right. What are you having? I've had my breakfast. I've had it downstairs. And I intend to have all my meals down there from now on. Well, I can understand that. It must be upsetting eating up here. It's not upsetting. It's infuriating. You should be at the table with all of us. I can't. Too much trouble getting down there and then trying to eat. Then let's spend the morning practicing. Doug, we both of us stumbled around this house in the middle of the night when the children were sick or we couldn't sleep. That was different. Please, Doug. Maybe tomorrow, Kate. I'm very tired. If you go on like this, you'll always be tired. Each day, you grow more and more exhausted. I'm not doing this purposely. I'm helpless up here. Yes, you are. But you're also very sorry for yourself. That's what I can't bear. When you left the hospital, you were going to be the best blind man there was. Well, maybe you'll have to settle for less. But how are you ever going to find that out if you don't try? I will try. Kate, I'm just not ready. Doc, we decided against the operation because it was too dangerous. It might have killed you. If you go on like this, what was the point of that decision? Kate. No, tell me what the point was. If you sit up here hour after hour, day after day, you're just killing yourself. If you want to do that, I suppose there's no way for me to stop you. But I don't have to help you to be an invalid. I won't do it. You're on your own, babe. find a number for a Mr. Philip Raskin. He's an attorney in Pasadena. I can't. I'm blind. Could you ring him for me, please? Thank you. I'm Philip Raskin. May I come in? Oh, of course. I'm Kate Lawrence. We met at a bar association dinner. Yes, I remember. I think I'd better take your arm. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Your husband called me and asked me to come over. He did. I heard about what happened, and I, I wanted to visit, but I thought it might be wiser to wait till I was invited. 
I can't tell you how glad I am that you came. I was beginning to think that... Mr. Lawrence wasn't ever going to pull himself together. Yes. It's very rough at the beginning. Where is he? Oh, he's upstairs in our room, right this way. The stairs are just in front of you. Doug, you have a visitor. If Mr. Lawrence would acknowledge our presence, I could find my way to him. Well, Mr. Raskin. Hello. Um, uh, this is between us boys. Oh, of course. You better start talking, Mr. Lawrence, or you're going to have to have this room redecorated. I don't know what to say. Let's see. I'm sitting in a chair near the window. That's a help. I have a feeling we're within arm's distance. I'd try and shake hands, but that would be a, a ridiculous formality for us, don't you think? Well, sit down, if you can find a chair. Thanks. I had a feeling I'd, uh, I'd be hearing from you. I appreciate you coming. I wanted to talk to somebody who'd been through the same thing. Because your family doesn't understand you. They expect too much of you. You've been talking to my wife? No, no. No, her assumption is that you called me because you wanted to take the bull by the horns. I wasn't going to upset her by telling her the truth. Which is? That you're looking for a few handy hints on how to remain an invalid. Your wife is right, you know, to want you to get moving. I'm not going to do anything to change her mind. I see. It's got to be one of those pull yourself up by your bootstrap speeches. I did it, Doug, so can you. Exactly. You can be poor, useless, blind Douglas Lawrence if you want to be. I'm not poor, blind Philip Raskin. I am useless. And you're going to remain so as long as you insist on making this room into a prison cell. Wait a minute. No, it's hard for me to get up the stairs and, and come across this room to talk to you. Every damn minute of every day is hard. Every second presents new obstacles. I know that. But no, you don't. You don't know until you've tried to overcome them and failed. If you fall on your face failing, I'll, I'll be happy to sympathize. Well, you just sit there. I'm. I haven't the time or the interest. I don't know what happened to me. Why I feel this way. When I was in the hospital, I went on and on about what I was going to do. You lost your nerve. That happens. I don't think I can get it back. Well, maybe not. But you've got an awful lot to lose if you don't try. Look, we're both lawyers. We both have wives and families. We both lost our sight late. That loss was more than enough for me. I was damned if I was going to lose the rest, too. Any questions? A lot, I think. Upstairs again? No. Willie? No. I don't want you to either, Nancy. Mother! If your father wants to eat upstairs, all right. If the dining room's downstairs, that's where it's gonna stay. Don't look at me like that. I said the same thing to him. Did you talk to Philip Raskin about this? No. He was upstairs for almost two hours. Did Daddy tell you what they talked about? I haven't seen him since Mr. Raskin left. He said your father wanted to be alone. I saw no reason to go against his wishes. 
Mom, you're, you are punishing him for something that he has... No, he's punishing himself and us, and it has to stop. Dinner ready? Mm-hmm. You eating upstairs? No. But your father is. Therefore, it's safe for you to join us down here. Sit down, buddy. Willie, dinner's ready. Lots of gravy, please, if that one's for me. Okay. No. Smell of meatloaf. You know, I never could resist it. Oh, Doug. Look who's here, the mystery guest. There you go, Pop. <laughs> Have a seat. you smell those Brussels sprouts down. That's it. I missed you all. obvious question, but we have to establish what your goals are. Well, that's easy. I want to live just the way I did before. Is that all? The last person I talked to said she'd be pleased if she could get from the bedroom to the bathroom by herself. I have something much less modest in mind. He's already taken the first steps. Getting around the house is easier every day. We've been practicing. I understand. Now, let's get you started, Mr. Lawrence. I'll introduce you to your instructor and, well, good luck. raised surfaces will help you regulate the heat. Uh, feel them? Okay, we have 250, 350, and all the way around is royal. Now all you have to do is remember the uh, position of each of them. Here, you try it yourself. Two fifty. Three fifty. Broil. Maybe now you'll learn to cook. Well, no matter what you decide to learn, the really important thing is that everything in the kitchen, and all the rooms for that matter, always be kept in exactly the same place. Oh, I've battled cry for years. Well, you'll uh, all have more incentive now. What's next? Well, now, slow down, Doug. You've only been at it a week. Can't expect to know it all. Well, maybe not, but there's no harm in trying. Now, this is a uh, timer, and all the numbers are in braille. You know? Tell me what the coins are. A quarter. All right, uh, nickel. Okay. Right. Penny? No, that's a dime. Feel the edge. Oh, it's a serrated edge. Mm -hmm. I see. I never knew that. And the penny isn't. Most people don't. Ah. All right, now use the uh, left index finger as a guide on the tracks there and move the right hand along the tracks until you come to the first character. All right, now there's your first one. What is that? One dot. And a one dot is an A. A. Now move along the tracks to the second character. 
What is that? Two that dots Arranged up, tau. up and down. Right. That's a B. B. I move along the next set of tracks. Now this door opens out and to the right. It's important that you give the uh, person you're leading that information. Also, the person you're leading should always take your elbow and keep it close to your body. That way he can tell when you're going to the left or right or up or down. Uh, go ahead and try it on your own. Anybody in the living room? Here, Dad. Am I interrupting anything? No. It's just a hockey game of solitaire. I want to write your grandfather a letter. Can you take some dictation? I'm at your service. You talk and I'll type. Buddy was in the living room with you, wasn't she? Can I get away with saying no comment twice in the last two minutes? I've tried to talk to her. I guess I'll just have to try harder. No. I have to do it. I'm just not ready yet. Well, now, dear James and Constance. Now, wait a minute. Uh, how about you? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm dandy. Are you working hard? Like a dog. Bertrand Hammond's letting me take some of his sittings, and he's giving me carte blanche with the equipment. Well, it sounds like things are really improving for you. Every day, in every way. Well, now, you were saying... Dearest James and Constance. Dearest James and Constance. It was really wonderful. Are you going to take all day with that? We've got to get the backing ready for Deborah Power sitting. Uh, don't you think you'd better check the Miller proofs? I'm sure they're dry by now. The trouble with you is you're so disorganized. When I notice the filing has begun to pile up, I suggest you see to it. Yes, master. Raskin's incredible, don't you think? He told me the first time he addressed a jury after his blindness, he gestured and hit one of the jurors on the nose. Can you imagine? I'm afraid so. <laughs> I must say, if it weren't for the cane... You wouldn't know. Make me feel like getting back out there. You'll be just as good in time. Well, Mr. Raskin's coming out. Oh, Mr. Raskin, over here. You coming over? Mm-hmm. Doug Lawrence. Yeah, right here. I was in court today. Congratulations. Piece of cake. A verdict in 20 minutes. Oh, uh, Kate, uh, excuse me. You know Philip Raskin? Hello, how are you? I enjoyed your uh, performance. Lawyers are really frustrated actors. Well, how have you been? Fine. fine. <laughs> Better than fine. And today really set me up. I can't wait to get back. You really convinced me, Philip. It doesn't matter at all. Not seeing. Yes. It matters. But only to me. I would have sold my soul to see the look on the prosecutor's face when the verdict came in. 
He was fit to be tied. Well, I have a client waiting. Well, I'd like to talk to you again, uh, when you have the time. Absolutely. Good to see you, Mrs. Lawrence. Bye-bye. Take care, Doug. Bye. Kate, I don't know what would have happened to me if I hadn't called him. Enough about you. What about me? How's about lunch? Sure. Let's find a place where it won't take you half an hour to read the menu to me. to dinner for pizza and I'll pay. I suppose you think I'm dying to see you part with some of your money. Forget it. Well, you don't have to be so mean about it. Maybe I do. First of all, I'm feeling lousy. My job is the pits. Bertrand Hammond thinks he can treat me like a scullery maid ever since I begged him to take me back. And then there's you. What about me? Why don't you come off it and rejoin the family? You haven't spent 10 minutes with Dad ever since he came home. You're so hell-bent on acting as if he had leprosy that you haven't even noticed that he's OK. And he's getting better every day. Can he see? Well, you know damned well he can't. But he's going to be able to get along just almost as if he could see. He's doing great. And he needs us. And he needs you to tell him that. What he needs is to see. Right this minute, I'm not liking you very much, buddy. I'm sorry I didn't come down to dinner. I just had a very rough day. Well, you're not obliged to be at every meal. To be on call for me every hour of the day and night. You've got your own life to lead. Oh, I know that, Dad. You know, I've been thinking. You said the other night you had more responsibility at Bertrand Hammond's. The job was more of a challenge now. Yeah, it sure is. So maybe it's time that you uh, moved on. You mean, quit my job? I don't want you to be too secure there. That job was never anything more than a way to keep me off your back. <laughs> Remember, you said that. I didn't. I know I've been rough on you about getting it together. Now, I think maybe that's not so important. What's important is not wasting yourself, your time, your energy, doing something you don't care about. If you want to get out, do it. And don't be afraid to take chances, Willie. What's safe isn't always what's best. If you want what's best, you have to take some risks. I suppose I should have expected it. I'm always the one who gets taken advantage of. I'm always the one who's left. I thought you were different, Willie. But evidently, I was mistaken. You're just like the other three. No, four. Four! They came in here, they took everything I had to offer, and they left. 
And I suppose, like the others, you've been using my time and my telephone to find a new job. No, I don't have a job. Mr. Hammond, I don't want to be rude, but that military backing is beginning to look good to me. That military backing has been a mainstay of this studio for over 25 years. Now you've got it. Well, if, if that's the way you feel about it, you needn't give notice. You're fired. That's a deal. That's some afternoon snack. I'm a growing girl, and I'm hungry. Good. Then I can be sure you'll be at the table when dinner's served. Can I have a bat, please? No. Your father went to his office today. I'm planning a special meal as a celebration. I want you to be there. Sorry, Mom, I can't do that. It's not a celebration to me, and I can't pretend. Buddy, your father has made a huge effort and adjusted to a terrible situation with really very good grace. We didn't have to. I guess you're just too young to think clearly about all this. It's not a thinking matter. It's a feeling one. And I feel lousy about it, about Dad. Oh, buddy. I don't think it's really fair to expect me to feel the same way you and Nancy and Willie do. Just because it's the proper way to feel. I know you're all mad at me, but I'm mad too. At Dad. He always told me never to settle for second best. But that's what he's doing, right? No, I don't think so. Well, I feel so. Buddy, you're causing him a lot of pain. And I don't think you're being fair to him. But if those are your true feelings, your true feelings, you better straighten it out with Daddy. I can't, Mom. Nancy, Doug, I'm in here. Hi. Where's Doug? Is he all right? Yeah, he just went upstairs to rest. Today was very hard for him. My God, why not? To go back to his office where he's gone every day for so many years, not to be able to see it. Well, I don't think that was it. What then? Well, he's just learned so much, so fast. It's like he suddenly has a sense of his limitations, that no matter how well he manages as a blind man, it's just not the same as being able to see. It's not enough. Buddy? Right. I guess you think I'm crazy looking out the window. Yeah, I do. You're right, I am. To what do I owe the honor of this visit? Still have my hat? I'd like it back. Well, I'm not sure. I think it's in my dresser. I'll take it. You won't need it anymore. And after you take it, are you going to leave and continue to avoid me? Buddy, what is it? What have you been thinking all this time? I don't like you for being blind. Well, I don't want to be blind. It wasn't my choice. It is now. Some people have to be blind, but you don't. There's this girl in my class, Ellen Raskin. Her father's a lawyer, too. He's blind. He has to be blind. He's gone everywhere trying to find an operation to help him, but he can't. He'd give anything for the chance that you had. The operation might not have been successful. I was frightened. So was I. I don't want you to die. But I think you're just going to start dying anyway. Because you want to see, and I know you do. I dare you to tell me you don't. I dare you to tell me, standing in front of that window, not seeing if it's night or day is okay with you. That's enough, buddy. I see you. 
I dare you to tell me that not seeing me back is good enough. It's not good enough. Please want to see me again, Dad. Please try. I want to, buddy. I want to. I want to see you again. I didn't know if you were awake. I am. I am too. You're not upset by my telling Willie to quit his job, are you? No, he's been miserable there. Well, I realized he'd left and then gone back because of me. Well, he's gonna be all right, you know? They all are. I never questioned that for a minute. Well, hardly ever. Well, Buddy's the toughest one. Yes, she is. She gets it from you. Doug, what's this conversation about? Well, I've been thinking about a lot of things. What Buddy said. Do you remember what Philip Raskin said the other day? You mean about how his being blind only matters to him now? I'm beginning to feel the same way. Oh, no, I don't mean you feel that way. But today at the office, First, everybody walked very softly. And it was business as usual. I think Nancy accepts it. That's because you're so assured. I told you I'd be the best blind man ever. Huh. Maybe I was right. I don't like myself very much for it. Oh, honey. I don't like myself for agreeing to live with all these limitations. When I had a chance for more. Still have that chance. The risk. We mutually agreed you wouldn't have the operation. You still feel the same way? Do you? I asked you first. I want to have you here. But I want you here content with yourself and with what you've decided. Yes. I want to look at you. I even offered to take her to dinner, the restaurant of her choice. It didn't help. You should have seen the look on her face when the nurse asked her how old she was. Buddy? I'm sorry, Willie, I'm a little groggy. Yeah, it was Buddy. Uh, 
They found out she was only 14 and they wouldn't let her come up. I had no idea she knew such language. Oh, Buddy knows everything. Kate, is Kate here? Uh, no, she will be. She's out trying to contain Buddy. She'll be here in a few minutes. Dad, Buddy said to give you her love. And this. Good night, Counselor. They gave me something to put me to sleep. Well, you sleep well. You be well. That's from Timmy. That's from me. Doug Lawrence, you're my life. Whatever happens to you, happens to me. So you won't leave me. You can't. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. I tried, but nothing stays down. Why don't you come upstairs with us? I can't. If I'm here, even outside, I'm with him. Well, they won't come down here. They don't even want me here. Please, Roy, go back to them. I remember the time when Dad came home and said, if we all jump in the car real fast, we can make it out to the beach in time to see the sunset. All the sunsets are stored up inside, Daddy. Yeah, well, Mom had school stuff to do, and, and I wanted to go to the movies with Audrey. And you were going somewhere, too. And Dad said, if we miss the sunset, we'll never be able to see it again. They don't go into reruns.
It's mom. He's all right. Daddy's all right. Is he? Can he see? They think so. They're not sure yet. But children, he's through it. He's alive. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Douglas Lawrence starring in The Revenge of the Mummy. I think you're wonderfully calm under the circumstances. Think again. You know, you've been so brave through all of this. That's what you thought. It's almost over now. He's alive, that's the important thing. But I want it all. I know. Kate, you can come in now. Doug? You're a sight for sore eyes. 